Hello, my name is David Brumley. In this video, we'll look at the networking tool Wireshark, which can be used for inspecting communication as it flows from your computer to a remote server. Wireshark can be downloaded from www.wireshark.org. So I've opened up here the Wireshark application. And the first time you run it, you have to configure it and tell it which network cards to listen to. And these are called, uh, the network cards are called interfaces. So I'm just going to click them all as a matter of simplicity. And then you use Wireshark to capture communication flowing between your computer and remote computers. I'm going to start a new live capture, which is going to capture all information flowing between my computer right now. And I've gone here to Google Chrome, and I'm just going to click refresh on this file and I'm going to fetch this file from this remote web server users.ece.cmu.edu and I'm going to uh, get this response. I'm also going to go to google.com and I'm going to request that and maybe we'll go to news.google.com and we get a bunch of news information and so on. So then I go back here and you can see lots of data is flowing. I'm going to press the stop button and that's going to stop the live capture. And you can see that Wireshark has divided the information into three different windows. This first window is a list of flows between my computer and remote computers. This middle panel here is detailed information for each set of packets that are flowing. And this third is just the raw bytes. And so this is really the same, represent, same information down here as up here. It's just this is a structured view. So you can see when we look at the uh, packet or message or flow view that there's a source address, there's a destination address, there's the protocol, the link, and the information. And if we click on any of these, it changes the detailed view. And so I'm just going to go here to the HTTP request. And you can see here that there's Ethernet information, IP information, and TCP information. And it's quite extensive. Now you may be looking at all this information saying, whoa, that's a lot of information. Um, I don't know what all these different fields mean. Like what is a source port? What is a destination port? What is a sequence number? And that's perfectly OK. No one knows every internet protocol inside and out. We learn them. And it's just a matter of going out and when you don't know something, figuring it out. For example, if I didn't know what a, a uh, for example, the source port is in a TCP, I would go look up in, for example, Wikipedia, what is TCP? And there's a nice article here that describes the TCP packet format, the network function, the segment structure, and it talks about, you know, what a source port is and a destination port. And you can go in and read this and get a much better idea what the protocol is. So back to Wireshark. The thing I wanted to focus on in this is the HTTP protocol message. You see here that I'm getting this remote file, and we've broken this down into different fields for the HTTP message, and I'm getting it from this host, as you saw in the browser window. And you see all the information that my browser passes to the remote server. So it not only passes that it wants to get this text file, but it also passes things like my user agent string, which includes things like I'm running potentially Chrome, that I have these uh, encodings that I accept, like gzip and so on, that the languages I accept are things like English. So this is the request. Everywhere there's a request, there's likely a reply. And so you can see the HTTP reply here, where the web server passes back to me the file. And so it says, OK, here's the file. And in fact, it doesn't pass just back the file. It also, for example, tells me it's Apache 2.2.17. Now, this is important. For example, when a hacker uh, scans the internet, you may have heard this term, he would connect to servers and say, well, that's an Apache server. And if he had an exploit for this particular version, maybe he tries it out. But that, of course, is for a different lecture. We're just looking at packet captures here. So you can see the actual information that was passed back is hello Pico CTF. Now we're looking at HTTP, and you can see there's a, a variety of different messages here going back and forth. I want to do a search here and see if there's any DNS messages. And in fact, there are. So you can see here that my computer asked the DNS server at this address a query. 
And in particular, it asks to resolve the IP address of news.google.com. And we've broken out here the DNS information. And uh, Wireshark is very nice that it goes through this. And you can go into, go into quite a bit of depth as far as where the actual query is and so on. So Wireshark is this very nice tool. You can go in and you can look at uh, all the messages flowing back and forth. And it provides a very nice viewpoint where it uh, breaks down the protocols for you. And if there's something in the protocols you don't know, you can just go find out. So in summary, Wireshark is a tool for capturing and viewing network data. It provides a really extensive view of that data. The second really important point is don't worry if you don't know the details of a protocol or you see something in Wireshark that you don't immediately understand. You don't need to know everything. In fact, you can often just learn enough to get by. And quite a bit of it is actually self so, uh, self-explanatory. For example, when looking at HTTP, you can go in and say, well, it's doing a GET request. Well, that makes sense because that's the page I went and got. So you don't need to know everything. You don't need to know all details. You can easily learn enough by looking online at resources. And try to think about what you're looking at. Some of it really is self-explanatory. Till next time, never stop hacking.